Well, good morning and welcome to the first ICCR race meeting of 2024. We're already streaming live. This is day two. We've got a new title sponsor, Infinite Energy. You can probably see behind me that uh, we've got a bit of a wind farm on top of the corporate suites and again over at the museum. So Mandela Park generating their own energy with solar panels here in Mandela Park. They did that as a partnership with Infinite Energy. They've now come on board as title sponsors of the ICCR. Happily, the Beacon Hospital have come back and they've helped us with this live stream. So we will be streaming from every meeting at Mandela Park, the Sunday of every ICCR meeting. Sorry about the wind. It's very, very, I feel like Theresa Mannion here. It's, uh, it's really, really windy up here at the top of the tower. Not as bad as it was yesterday. We've got some sunshine. We've got plenty of action coming all afternoon on the live stream. And we're streaming from now uh, until lunch. And then again at the end of the session, end of the day. So we start off with uh, Irish Legends. They had three races yesterday. Great entertainment. They're back in just a few minutes' time. In fact, they're in assembly already and getting ready to go. Then we've got the uh, Alloy Repair Center Fiesta STs. Uh, the Sayets are back out. The Fiesta z -Decks, loads of them. Great racing all day. We've got, uh, as we said, Sayet Super Cup, Future Classics as well. Precision Graphics, uh, Irish Touring Cars will be back out. Two of them went under the minute this morning in qualifying. So despite the blustery conditions, it seems pretty quick. Uh, Boss Ireland qualifying, they've just been out there now, and I think a 50.5, it's Tony Green in his pole position for that one. So I'm going to head back into the safety of the commentary box. The legends will be uh, released in just a few minutes' time, and uh, we can start screaming and show a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of action here. As we said, conditions are good. The racing should be very good. Despite that win, the marshals are going to be struggling a little bit out there today, I think, but uh, we should be in for a great day's racing here Model Park. So there we go, great shot with, uh, from See It Live, looking down at the M-Town Bridge, south side Motor Factors corner, and uh, our logos, of course, on the bottom of the screen, infinite ener energy that we spoke about. You can uh, see those solar panels from some of the shots, you'll see them later on today. We actually have a fleet of Opal, Opal Ireland uh, e-courses, electric uh, courses that we use for the transition year program for early drive, and uh, those cars are effectively being charged for free at Mandela Park lately with the use of this uh, wind farm. Here's one of the BMW Ireland safety cars coming in, brand new BMW, uh, there's, this, there's uh, some of the solar farm we have on top of the corporate suites and the other half are out over the museum on the far side of the track, so they're supplied by Infinite Energy, do uh, have a chat with them if you're thinking of getting uh, a little bit of uh, solar work done in your house or business. So the BMW safety car just coming back down there, as we said, that's a brand new uh, BMW M2 competition CS, very, very quick car, 460 brake horsepower, you can drive that car around the track here at Mandela Park with our BMW uh, experience, you just log on to mandelapark.ie and uh, pick your car, Ferrari, BMW, Porsche, single seater, whatever you want, loads of different options. Uh, a lot of investment in Mandela Park. You can see on the right-hand side there, it's all, it's been tarmacked all the way from the gate in, proper car park marking, laurel hedges on both sides. And the place looking really, really smart. Well done to Ian Beattie, John Rock, and all the team. Uh, they've done a lot of work in over the last few weeks in anticipation of this opening meeting. And you can see new pickup vehicles there down in the pit lane, all new BMW uh, safety cars, medical cars, all that sort of stuff. But it's legends going out on track first, and they will give us some fine entertainment. They were really good to watch yesterday. In fact, uh, race three, Owen Lawler took the win. He was delighted, Owen, to be in uh, he raced Fiat's for many years and then went off racing carts and came back. He's here with his family yesterday. Absolutely delighted to take that win in, uh, in, eight, in race number three. And he'll be looking for another one here today. He starts a pole position, but he's got Sylvie Bartlett alongside. Sylvie, an ex-Formula V racer, and did a Fiesta STs last year and did quite well in them. And uh, had a one-off race in a legend and decided that's what he wanted to race. So got himself a legend and uh, has had it done. It looks absolutely superb. In fact, they all did. It turned out really well. Most of that legacy of uh, Paul O'Brien's wonderful POB racing team. There's your graphics. Owen Lawler will start on pole position. Alongside him will be Sylvie Bartlett. Then Willie Lawrence, watch out for him. He was a rookie two years ago. He's very much an experienced driver and has won in these cars before. Evan Curran alongside him. Another rookie. Then Scott Jackson, Richard Spence. And then it's uh, Lee Malone, another really quick man. Watch out for that car number 13. And seven, Derek Hogan. You won't miss Derek Hogan. The car is a lurid pink, known as the Pink Panther. Then it's Anthony Malone. And yes, that is the same Michael Barable. That's Michael Barable, who is the reigning Fiesta Z-Tech champion. Now he's saying he was struggling a little bit, adapting to these cars. They are completely different to a Z-Tech, and that's a massive understatement. Uh, so he was starting to go well by the third race yesterday. Michael's massively experienced and has driven many different cars. I don't think it'll take him too long to, uh, to get the hang of these. 
So watch out for Michael Barbell coming from the back in the yellow and blue car. You can see it there on the right-hand side of your screen. They're weaving around, and uh, they'll do a rolling start as they always do. Motorbike engine. Glorious sound effects from these legends when they get going. They're up at Southside Motor Factor's corner now in grid formation. Once the starter is happy, he will change the lights to green. You can see them on the bridge there on the BMW M Town Bridge. Here come the legends, second gear, I'd imagine. Watch for somebody looking for a jump at the back. Peter Barrable used to be really good at it. He won the championship last year, and away they go. Don't think anybody's got a jump there. Somebody waving on the left-hand side in trouble. That's Lee Malone, I think. And it's dropped right to the back. Michael Barrable's up three places already. Oh, down the outside, he gets out of shape. Lawler it is who's uh, leading. No, it's not Bartlett round the outside of Lawler as they head for Campion Corner, turn two. Great move. So Sylvie Bartlett leads. And uh, in fact, Lawler falling back into the dogs. Red flags are out. The red flags are out. The race has been stopped. Um, looking around here. I see the BMW safety car is parked already out on the track. I don't see any reason why uh, it would be, but it's out of my view. So apologies for that, but the red flags are out. There must be a car off somewhere around the circuit. Most of them are still running. We might be missing one or two, but uh, I don't see. Michael Barrable's still there. Leave alone, still there, I think. Well, we'll see what happens. They're heading back round for a red flag. coming back in there may have been uh, cars out of position at the start I know there was an issue yesterday but uh, it looks like they've been waved out again some coming into the pit lane some not a little bit of confusion there Derek Hogan didn't go into the pit lane right, nobody off so uh, red flags being waved furiously so it's not a safety car it's a red flag in fact the marshal's out on track stopping them Seems to be a, have been possibly an issue with the grid order I'm hearing in my ear, but either way, nobody's off, which is good news, and we should be getting racing again on uh, on the Beacon Hospital live stream very, very shortly. So uh, the Legends organisers, thoughtful as ever, have given me uh, a little bit of a synopsis of each driver for times such as this, when you get a red flag on live TV, and they've all written what looks like a, almost like a dating profile about themselves. So let's Sylvie Bartlett, who took the lead there. He says he started racing in 2022 with his brother and partner as crew chiefs in Formula V. And while he only managed to finish four races and had terrible trouble keeping the car running, they learned a lot. Community was brilliant, so they didn't get discouraged, discouraged but money was dwindling fast. So stayed racing, but moved to ST for 2023. That's Fiesta STs. That went really well, and we had some really strong results. He did indeed. The car was flawless all season. Got loads of track time. As the ST was not ready in time for the opening round in April 2023, I rented a legend from POB Racing. And once I had, that was that. It was only a matter of time. They're amazing to drive, and I'm hoping for a good rookie year in the class in 2024. I'd like to thank my sponsors, Peak Performance Academy and Rob's Ranch House Killarney, for helping me out this year. Some great stuff. And they're just regridding behind the car. It looks like we'll probably have another uh, rolling start now, so that uh, BMW will take off and then lead them around the lap. Pullman Owen Lawler, number 55, said he raced Unos and Puntos in the noughties, returned racing in carts for a few years before returning to circuit racing in Legends Ireland Championship a number of years ago. Looking forward to some, some close racing in 2024 and hopefully get some more good results. Well, he got one yesterday, didn't he? He took a win in race three. Uh, massive thanks to all my sponsors. Mace, Morristown, TJ O'Mahony, Skylight.ie, BWG Foods and DMC.ie. That's the good thing about a red flag. You get sponsors get a mention, don't they? So look at the speed of the BMW. I didn't say it was quick. But uh, yeah, 460 brake horsepower. The rain is starting to come down. Look at the lens of our cameras down there. We've got spots of rain already. Just hope that the, there's a very strong wind that'll drive it across. 
pretty quickly. It does look a little bit misty. Look out the background there. That's a good shot. That's where the weather comes from. Out beyond turn three. An even better shot there. The Hill of Allen in the background. And that's where the rain comes from generally in Mandelo Park. And that's where the drivers look out from. If you can see the Hill of Allen, uh, generally the weather is going to be okay. If you can't, there's rain on the way and there's certainly rain coming out. It's gone a little bit darker. We have very high quality cameras from See It Live, so you don't see it here, but certainly it has gone dark outside. It's gone uh, threatening dark skies and the wind is, uh, is really picking up there. So the, uh, these 1,200cc motorbike engine machines, you can see in the background there, another great shot, that's the International Loop, that's another one kilometre circuit out there, and that's uh, the experiences are running on that today, so uh, customers are out there going around in the racing saloons, the Mazda race saloons, uh, being timed on that one kilometre loop, so having great fun, you can book yourself in there on mandelopark.ie. So here come the legends again. All back in their grid positions, Owen Lawler and Sylvie Bartlett, side by side in the front row, then Evan Curran, Willie Lawrence, Richard Spence, Scott Jackson, Derek Hogan, Lee Malone, Anthony Malone, and Michael Barable. Great sound effects as they go by us here in the tower. Just feeding them gears on the way down to turn one. Very wet though, and these cars are engineered with a little bit of Bartlett there. Gets it way out of shape and hangs onto it beautifully. I thought he was going to go around there. Big arm full of opposite lock for Owen Lawler as he stands on the power, but Bartlett's got it again around the outside. A little bit of contact, that's... Uh, who is that? That's... Um, let me have a quick look here. It's Evan Curran, I think, at turn two. That beautifully turned out green car, just catching up with somebody else. But I think they've all kept going. Rain is streaming down now again. You guys can't see it. I can see it on the windows of the commentary box. These cars will be very difficult. They don't have much grip in the drive. They have loads of power, but they take a lot of car control. They don't have a differential, so they tend to push on. So you have to steer them on the throttle. You actually sometimes have to turn them in on the throttle to get the back to kick out, which won't be a problem here in these conditions look at uh, who's that down the inside that is oh that's it's michael barrable down the outside of derek hogan all the way from the back so michael barrable definitely getting the hang of it he's an ex-rally man he won't be afraid of the wet conditions anyways they come out of the s's and he's looking like he's in a hurry here he's passed three or four cars already but it is sylvie bartlett the rookie leading this one they've got rookies and pros depending on how long you're in the class oh very difficult conditions now go by to complete lap one six minutes 40 seconds to go in this one so the order is sylvie bartlett just about from scott jackson who's down the outside on the brakes in the rapco car trying to sweep around the outside can he get it done he possibly can for campion corner indeed he can sylvie bartlett sits it out with him though they're still side by side on the exit oh, i think bartlett might have hung on that's impressive stuff from him he hasn't got much mileage in these cars but he sat right around the outside there and has hung on to that lead so bartlett still has the lead and he doesn't have changed again at the first apex of turn three as they head through double right hander so here they come back up towards us and lee malone i think beginning to close them down as they come back towards us Oh, and a big look down the inside there, and racing room being given, it's got to be said, by Sylvie Bartlett. He could have turned in there, but no, sitting around the outside. Tries again for the second bit of the S's, but 99 sits around the outside. Scott Jackson, that's committed stuff, and he takes the lead now, heading up towards the final corner. Doesn't defend, stays on the outside line. Bartlett's sitting right behind him as they first two come round south side out onto the main straight. Lee Malone right with them, but not crowding them just yet. And is that Michael Barnable in fourth place? It's going to be a quick lap for him if it is. Fastest lap to Michael Barable. That's not the first time I've said that at Mondello Park, but it's the first time I've said it in Irish Legends. Barable from last on the grid now, up to fourth place and charging up to the leaders. Fastest lap by a considerable mar margin. He's the only one in the 13s. There's nobody in the 14s, and the leaders are doing 115. So Michael Barable on a huge charge here. I did say that yesterday he got the hang of these cars. He's certainly beginning to settle in. And Michael Barable now up to fourth place and looking very strong in these very tricky conditions. Let's see if he can get a podium position. Four minutes, 56 to go. They're all beginning to settle down a little bit and just get a grip on what uh, what way the track is, where the grip is and where the grip isn't. But uh, rookie, the rookie Bartlett, very impressive here. Michael Barable also down as a rookie, which is not without irony because Michael was winning races here in the 70s in Formula 4 at 1600. He was a bit of a superstar. He won the Fiat Uno Cup in 1993. He won the Dunlop Sexton Trophy, which is the overall speed championship. He's won national rallies. He's won the six-hour race at Mondello. He's the reigning Fiesta Z-Tech champion. I could go on. So he's pretty quick and he's very experienced. But uh, the, the standard at the front of Legends has always been sharp. Scott Jackson goes through. Bartlett goes through. Oh, Scott Jackson down into the 12s now. Must be drying out just a little bit. 12, 9, 6, 6. So looking good for him. 
and Michael Barrymore on a similar pace but not uh, closing the gap at the rate of knots that he was so Bar Scott Jackson stretches his lead out to 1.7 seconds now another half a second back for Lee Malone and then Michael Barrowell at 1.7 back from that so Michael Barrowell not making the progress that he had made from that really quick lap a few laps ago there's our order on the left and you can see the colours this is new for 2024 the uh, purple or pink colours beside the numbers uh, that denotes the rookies so Bartlett, Malone and Barrowell sorry Bartlett, Barrowell and Curran are the rookies there Evan Curran going well as well that beautifully turned out green car we only saw a quick shot of him earlier he's running there in fifth place Barable still hanging on to the lead. There's a massive gap back behind him. In fact, it was five and a half, six seconds as they went by the last time. But now Barable certainly not catching the first three anymore as he was. He drifts the car out of the S's there. Nordic Spirit Corner and up the hill towards Southside. But Scott Jackson looking pretty content out front. He's not getting out of shape. He's getting into a bit of a groove. He had fastest lap last time round. Somebody urging... Uh, Michael Barrable on, that's possibly Paul O'Brien, I think it was Paul O'Brien from PB. They have a great relationship to Barrables and Paul O'Brien, massive sideways stuff from Lee Malone there and hangs on to it beautifully, just about held on to that but not a bother and I've got back on the bar. He was thinking of a look around the outside but stopping the car was a little bit of an issue. You can see Derek Hogan's motorhome there in the paddock with the picture of his Pink Panther legend on the back of it. Back down, to waiting for somebody to come back round towards the S's now, it should be Scott Jackson from Sylvie Bartlett, Lee Malone and Michael Barrable and he's your first four. Barable a little bit closer, I think, to the second and third place battle, but the leader is definitely beginning to get away. Oh, tough, difficult, tough conditions now for the cameras. You can barely see out of that one, so uh, clearing just a little bit as they come down into the S's, but there's very, very heavy rain. You can't really see it, as we said on the telly, but uh, believe you me, it is very heavily raining here at Mondello Park. We reduced showers for today, but it's supposed to be uh, reasonably okay. Let's see how that progresses. So Jackson gets a turn in, yeah, Barable definitely closing up on the other two. Barable's going to have a go here, he'd love a podium position, wouldn't he, on his first weekend. Paul O'Brien over the barrier again, waving him on, there he is, centre of picture. Paul O'Brien is not just a really good team owner, he's a racer and a very good one, and he just loves this sort of stuff. He's been involved in uh, preparing a, a winning six-hour car, a championship winning rallycross car for Nicole Drought, loads of different cars. So POB Racing, a very successful venture by former Legends champion Paul O'Brien. They're heading out towards turn three now with just one minute and 23 to go so if Barrable wants a podium position he's going to have to make a move fairly quickly here he's up to third oh no he's not he's just caught them but the leader's out of shot so Barrable almost up there this is going to be interesting that's what we watch this battle for second third and fourth Barrable putting a wheel on the curb and the exit of turn three brave stuff in the wet you want to stay off the curbs really at Mandela Park it's wet they can be like absolute glass exit curbs especially and in a rear wheel drive car especially but they're all pushing so hard that gap is just ebbing and flowing isn't it it's opening and closing at certain parts of the track but Barrable certainly is trying very hard you can see him drifting the car out of the S's again as Scott Jackson gets on the brakes up into Southside it's actually very bright up there towards Southside there's a lot of bright weather out over the international loop but certainly and there's some coming it's gone bright out over turn three so I think this rain is going to disappear but uh, certainly the circuit is wet at the moment it's going to be side by side for second place now on the run down towards turn one way out of shape is Barton is he going to go around he does go around Barrable just clears and Barrable's third now that's a shame a very impressive form by uh, Sylvie Barton I think he can recover and not lose his place there but let's have a look 12-9 still the fastest lap Michael Barrable 13-1 so Michael Barrable within a tenth of the fastest lap the leader's fastest lap and he's up to third place now checkered flag is ready soaking and blowing all over the place but it's ready below me here at the start finish line here they come for the last time up over the hill that's a great shot you don't really get a, 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 a perspective of how it looks here come up the hill out of turn three and then drop down slightly as he comes to the off camber left hander starting the s's that's bridgestone and then the right hander which is nordic spirit corner that they're coming to just now first second where's barrable he's there in third place it looks like he's only got a podium he is because bartlett's fallen well back with that one so here they are for the last time at Southside motor factors corner for the first race on the live stream of the Infinite Energy ICCR 2024. Great drive from Scott Jackson. He's delighted, hand out the window. Lee Malone second, Michael Barrable third. He will be happy with that. Well, happier than he was yesterday. That's a good run by Michael Barrable in the MB Motors car. 
So Michael and his son, uh, Peter Barrow, will have swapped roles this year. Michael won the Fiesta Championship and uh, Peter won the Legends Championship. So just for a bit of fun, they've swapped. So Michael Barrow's in Legends and Peter Barrow, who took pole in the dying minutes of qualifying, will be out in the Siltex Safety Fiesta Zetex later on. Somebody off at the final corner. Scott Jackson takes that one, Lee Malone, Michael Barrable, Sylvie Bartlett, William Lawrence, Evan Curran, there we go. 40, that's, uh, that's Derek Hogan, he's fine. If they can get that car, give it a push out, or maybe one of the rescue units will be needed. It might be dug in just a little bit. He was actually side by side in the braking zone with his brother-in-law with uh, the pole man, uh, Owen Lawler, and tried to go around the outside, almost had it done, the back end got away. He did actually correct it, but by that stage he'd run out of road, just out of shot, and uh, that means he didn't quite get to the checkered flag. There is your result. So Scott Jackson, Lee Malone and Michael Barrable take their top three, but actually in Legends, or in Rookie, you should say, Michael Barrable takes the win from Sylvie Barnett and Evan Curran, they're your top three rookies. So great stuff from the Legends Ireland Championship. That's just their first race of the day. We'll be seeing plenty of them later on here at Mondello Park. In just a few minutes' time, we're going to have the Alloy Repair Centre Fiesta ST Championship. They're already in the assembly area, so the Alloy Repair Centre, their new title sponsor for 2024. So you can see down into the pit lane there, uh, it's still very, very wet, but actually out over turn three, it is beginning to get a lot brighter out there. The weather changing so quickly because of the strong wind, of course, those uh, rain clouds being blown across the circuit and away, and it looks like we're going to get some clear weather, but Fiesta STs on uh, Nankang tyres, they don't have wets and slicks, so they'll be a little bit compromised in there next up. Dunlop Master Superbike Championship is supported by Dunlop Tyres, Maxxis Commercial Vehicles, The Harris Group, Principal Insurance and Superbikes.ie.
NXT Championship, the more powerful of the two one make Fiesta Championships that race at Mandela Park. Rejuvenated for this year, the Alloy Repair Centre, a business in Cookstown Industrial Estate in Tala, a sister of the accident sister company of the Accident Repair Company, state of the art uh, business, also up in Cookstown. We were up there for a photo shoot to launch this just a few weeks back. It's a very impressive. Uh, it's a very impressive building indeed, but uh, they've come on board as title sponsors. And in fact, Owen from the, from the Alloy Repair Centre has purchased the x Motors Fiesta ST. So we might see him on the grid. He was out on a track day playing around with it, having great fun recently. So hopefully he'll join the grids. We've got uh, 21 drivers registered already, which is more than we've had for the last about four years. So there's a little bit of value to be had in these cars. They're very quick. They're about five seconds a lap quicker than the Fiesta z -Tex. Some very experienced drivers in them. But uh, Ross Barnes, in, uh, now that may look like the car that he always drove it's not it's Barnes Auto has sponsored of course it is but it's uh it's the ex Graham McDonald championship winning car and he absolutely loves it he was very confident coming up to the start of the season here and uh, alongside him is uh McMullen I think that is indeed it is then White Roy White and Tim McQuaid on the second row with the great impressive stuff from Tim McQuaid he's um a newcomer just came in last year hadn't raced at all and was immediately quick So sorry, that's uh, Tim McQuaid on row two, as we said. Then Michael Cullen is not like Michael Cullen to be back on row three. He's not used to seeing cars in front of him on a starting grid at Mandela Park. Alongside him, Victor Cullen, that's the two Beacon Hospital cars. Beacon Hospital, of course, the sponsor of our uh, of our live stream here. Then it's Keen O'Brien, 555, the Dundalk Charger. Watch out for him. Gordon Kellett, massively experienced. Chris Grive Jr., Bobby Turley. Eric, I'll have to, I, apologies if I get this wrong, uh, Coney's me, I think, I'll check that out at lunchtime, then Brenda Fitzgerald returning from the UK, Trevor Farrar, Chris Jones, Chris Grimes Sr., Wayne Laverick, Marcus Hayes, son of the legendary John Hayes, and John Elliff, watch out for John Elliff, he won't stay at the back for too long, ex car right? I don't think he got any laps in qualifying in his new car. Away we go, McMullen gets the start from the outside, the front row of Barnes goes back at him, I think he changed gear, second gear earlier, somebody down the outside, it's McQuaid, Tim McQuaid on the outside as they go under the bridge, and it's three abreast, here's Roy White, we always say watch out for Roy White in the wet, the grey car in the centre of the screen, there he goes, throws the car sideways, not a bother on him, stands on the power and pulls it back, but Fitzgerald into his quarter panel, drives him wide and they're both off on the outside, Michael Cullen just about survives the madness, that's Gordon Kellett, remember me from, uh, from 1995, the two uh, protagonists Protagonist there side by side. We're on board with Michael Cullen live at Mandela Park. We've been working on this. We'd see it live. It looks fantastic. I'm only a step away from being able to talk to Michael Cullen during a race. Mark my words before the season is out. I've made uh, Martin Kavanagh commit to it by saying it there live on telly. Look at this grid. Fantastic to see. But it's McMullen out front and uh, going nicely. Good start from him. He's got it all done down into the S's. It's Barnes next up. Gordon Kellett, Michael Cullen all in the mix there, uh, Victor Cullen too hard to identify them as they come back towards us but uh, they're all streaming through somebody very sideways, that's Roy White isn't it, out over the curbs and holds on to it, of course he does, it's Roy White, well that's great entertainment but the drifting is on in a couple of weeks time, Job Fest, uh, you're a few weeks early there with those angles I think Roy coming out of the S's but he is a joy to watch in wet conditions, yellow flag there. Somebody off down at turn one out of our view. That's Chris Grimes Jr. up to third place. Great stuff from him. Young uh, rally crosser and an auto tester. He would have no problem getting a car out of shape. And uh, hasn't gone this well in STs before, but he's in third place overall. Christopher Grimes Jr. Great stuff from him. That's Fitzgerald off up on the bank and the outside of turn one. We're on board again at Michael Cullen, and that's uh, Keen O'Brien, I think, oh, out on the curbs, it's rough stuff, they're all trying really hard, third gear, does he go for fourth, no, leaves it in third, there's a the new tone car of McMullen now, down into the double apex right-hander, Barnes, is he a little bit closer, I think he's not one and a half seconds behind, maybe, then it's Grimes, then it's Victor Cullen, then it is the 555 car of Keen O'Brien, and then Michael Cullen, so the yellow H car is struggling a little bit here in relative terms, certainly Michael Cullen was dominant, let's watch him on board. He saw him at the wheel. It's a great onboard shot of Michael Cullen right on the back bumper of uh, O'Brien now. They go through the left. Third gear all the way through there and the right, just trying to find a gap up the inside. You can see what Michael Cullen's trying to do there. Here's McMullen, Barnes, Grimes going beautifully, it's got to be said. Victor Cullen, Michael Cullen with a lunge. Looking to get up the inside now on the exit. There's John Elliff. I did say watch out for him. He's 10th from 19th on the grid. So, uh, Elephant on a charge as well. We'll keep an eye on him, the brand new car, car number 100. 
I'm sure he will motor up to these guys. Here's Roy White having to go with Michael Cullen now at the back of this group. The orange and grey car, that's Grimes, Victor Cullen, Keen O'Brien, Michael Cullen. Keen O'Brien gets a little bit out of shape. Michael Cullen tries to get alongside. Doesn't get it done on this occasion. But uh, McMullen out front now. Oh, and uh, Keen O'Brien gets wide but carries the speed on and Cullen doesn't really get up to him. Fourth gear briefly that time. Back down to third. Look at him at the wheel just sawing away. These cars are a little bit loose by their nature when you're off the power. You need to get back on the power, which is what Michael's doing now. But Keen O'Brien's good car control as well, and it's not losing any time. They're beginning to space out a little bit. Grimes looks good, doesn't he? He's been fantastic in Rallycross. And he comes from a wonderful motorsport family as well. His father and his uncle, champion auto testers. Uh, very well known in the uh, in the pylon uh, areas of, uh, of motorsport there. And he does a little bit of that as well. They've got a mini special. And uh, he's also, as we said, well known for some rally crossing. So these conditions probably suiting him here at Mandela Park. Covers the inside line like a pro. Grimes. Victor Cullen just can't get alongside him as yet. Victor right in his wheel tracks though as they come out. Michael Cullen struggling a little bit in the background. He's dropped back from uh, Keen O'Brien and he's got Roy White in the Murray Motorsport car right with him. And behind Roy White is Tim McQuaid who qualified so well. Marcus Hayes making good progress as well. Another the new name, but uh, no surprise there. Oh, look at the sideways stuff. That was a beautiful shot of McMullen. Just big four-wheel drift coming through Campion Corner, and he needs to because that gap's coming down. Fastest lap last time round. Ross Barnes. This is going to be the battle for the lead shortly, and we still have 10 minutes and 42 seconds to go. There's your uh, your gaps on the left-hand side, the new graphic that we have, and, of course, the Alloy Repair Centre logo on the top left of the screen. So McMullen is pushing very, very hard, but he did a 14-1 last time round, but Barnes four-tenths quicker, 13-8. Grimes still a very impressive in third place. Victor Cullen tracking him. Then Keen O'Brien. Roy White has got by Michael Cullen. And Cullen now under pressure from Tim McQuaid. Here comes McMullen. Hazards like lights flashing. As, of, as are Victor's. Victor going to the outside, trying to get back to the inside with the back of the car moving around on him at the apex, just uh, having to put a little bit of opposite lock on as opposed to trying to get up the inside, which is what he was planning. He's still got a good exit though, and he's right on the back bumper of uh, of Christopher Grimes Jr. Grimes is calm as anything though, goes to the inside. Victor getting a bit brave down the outside on the brakes. Keen O'Brien will be trying to get up. Oh, a little bit of opposite lock for Victor at the apex there again. The car's quite taily. Hang on to it beautifully. Victor, of course, has been racing in the UK already this year. He had very impressive outing in the Lotus Cortina at Donington. Michael Cullen balancing the car there. Car looks like a little bit of a handful, doesn't it? There was opposite lock at the apex there as well. I think that's just conditions, though. It's very great. Oh, it's beautifully bright out over turn three now. I know it's not, you haven't tuned in for weather forecast, but certainly the weather has cleared and we can see out over the hedges there at turn three and there's nothing but sunshine coming. That's uh, not going to help these guys because it's still very treacherous out there. These cars can go around in probably the 106 bracket. Fastest lap of the race is 113.8. So that'll tell you how wet the track is as Victor Cullen still continues to hunt down Christopher Grimes Jr. for the last podium placing there's McMullen so McMullen Barnes Grime Jr. and Victor Cullen the order now then Keen O'Brien Roy White and surprisingly Michael Cullen back in seventh place not used to seeing that. Once again, Victor is just trying to find a way by, but he's being clever, Victor. He's not uh, going to throw this one away. He knows that he'll leave those points at the end of the season. Fourth place points are better than no points. Yeah, again, Michael Cullen struggling a little bit, isn't he? There's a lot of inputs into the steering wheel midway through that corner. I wonder did they gamble on a dry setup? They've got new front shocks in these cars this year. They're adjustable. They're better quality. They're gas shock. Better quality than the ones that were in them because these cars were tending to hop and bounce a little bit. The drivers didn't like them. And uh, they were a budget shock that were in the car. Now, these shocks are not a whole lot dearer, but they're certainly a lot better in the car. You can, well, you can see it now. You used to see the cars hopping and bouncing, coming down into the S's. Haven't seen any of it today. Look at that from McMullen. He's not afraid to let the back of that car hang out, is he? <laughs> coming out of the S's through Nordic Spirit Corner. And he needs to do that because just matching him every lap. A tenth quicker last time was Barnes. Grimes looking very composed ahead of Victor, isn't he? He's not looking flustered at all. And Victor has been crowding him and trying to get on his back bumper. Look again, Victor trying to look up the inside, but doesn't get the exit. And that's McQuaid has got by Michael Cullen. Down the outside into south side corner. It's a bad day out for Michael Cullen, unfortunately. Tim McQuaid has got ahead the novice. 
So down they come into turn one. We're on board now with Michael Cullen. Gets turned in. McQuaid Motors car in front being beautifully driven, beautifully turned out. That's a teammate of Michael Cullen. He's running with LOH Motorsport as well. That's uh, Luke O'Hara Motorsport run by Kevin O'Hara. Great team. They've uh, lots of top results. But they're massively competitive and very serious about their work. They won't be happy. There'll be a big debrief after this race, before race two, no doubt. I'm sure there was one after qualifying. So Grimes now has eased away from Victor Cullen. Who's got fastest lap? Roy White, 12-6. Roy White's half a second quicker than anybody on track. Let's have a look for him. There he is, the back of this group. The grey car at the back of this group. Roy White. Oh, Michael Cullen on board again. It's a great shot, isn't it? Down to the S's, trying to keep it over to the left for as far as they can. He's third gear all the way around there, not using second at all. And on the power, hard on the power. Watch Roy White at the back of this group. Look at him on the outside. Coming on to the main straight now, Roy White, the rally man, hanging the tail out on the car. Just watch him, there's the leader. There's Ross Barnes in second, but it's the next group we're watching. As they come back down towards us, there they are. Victor Cullen down the outside, last of the late breakers, doesn't quite get it done. Look at Roy White, the next car here. The front bumper is dislodged. He's been up there, back down, but he's incredibly quick. And uh, 12, 5, 0, 7, he's gone quicker again, but the leaders are in the 12s now. But uh, he's certainly fast as lap again for Roy White that time round. The bumper dislodged is not holding him back at all with five minutes and 47 seconds to go. Michael Cullen still dropping back. There's a great the, the graphic coming up with the fastest lap. Great to have that big improvements uh, timing system and the live stream this year. We've added on so much and it's absolutely fantastic to see it. We've got uh, constant timing there on the left hand side and we're getting prompts for fastest lap and stuff like that. So absolutely fantastic. Come back down towards the S's Grimes, hangs the tail out this time, balances it beautifully with a big lump of power, puts the, uh, the throttle pedal through the headlight as the drivers say, and pulls it back straight. So uh, it'd be interesting to see if he had the pace, if uh, Grimes had the pace to hang on to the leaders, if he didn't have to deal with Victor, because he really has had to defend for the whole race so far from Victor. Tim McQuaid going nicely, easing away now from Michael Cullen. And uh, I wonder, can he join in in the, in the action? Let's watch the times they go through here again, because uh, Roy White hasn't made that much more progress. Ross Barnes now with fastest lap at 12, 3, 6, 2. Ross Barnes in second place, hunting down the leader, a big lockup. He's gone straight on, a mistake from Grimes. Victor Cullen's pressure paid off eventually. These two young guys fighting it out, still getting experience, but uh, he did well to get that stop, didn't he? I thought he was going to park that in the kitty litter, Grimes. I wonder, was there any use of the handbrake there from the auto test man? Because he somehow got it stopped at the last minute, came off the brakes, trusted it, and the car did turn in, and he didn't end up in the kitty litter, because that could have given us a safety car and could have ended his race he's just cost him one place and he's not finished just yet because he's back on victor's back bumper one two three together and roy white right with them now as they come back up the hill fastest lap tim mcquaid the rookie tim mcquaid fastest lap 12 dead seven tenths quicker than darrell mcmullen so tim mcquaid is now catching this group that's him in the background there so uh, i think in these conditions with the dry line beginning to appear it's going to be difficult to pass somebody isn't it you might catch them but you're not going to uh, pass too easily track is obviously drying because we're getting a new fast lap every lap mcquaid hangs the tail out too he's not afraid of it victor cullen now going from the hunter to the hunted and he has to defend and he gets it out of shape on the exit of the south side first and second through that's compromised Victor a little bit, and Grimes fancies his chances here. You can smell it. He's right in his tracks, and again, behind uh, them, Keen O'Brien is under attack from Roy White. Watch how late Roy White can go on the brakes. Oh, and again, same mistake again for Grimes. This time he puts one wheel. He is flirting with disaster down into turn one, but that would have been so tempting, wouldn't it? If you got a run, you pull four gear, you get a run at Victor Cullen, you're going to have a go on the brakes down the outside. Well, I'm impressed with his stopping abilities. He might be going in a bit too late, but he's somehow managing to not park it up down there. That really looked like he was going to be gone again, but it's cost him more time, and uh, he really hit his fingertips on a podium there for the first time, I think, Christopher Grimes Jr., but he really is driving superbly. They're giving us a lot of entertainment. Tim McQuaid, again, is hauling in this group. It's a wonderful drive from him. He's in seventh place, but he's catching that battle, which is for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth ahead of him. There he is, the white car, just coming down into the S's now. Michael Cullen, can, he can watch the battle from afar, but he's dropping back. Again, the car doesn't look, uh, doesn't look too settled there coming into the S's. I wonder, have they, uh, have they still run the car full stiff? But if that was the case, he'd be getting quicker now, wouldn't he? And he's... Uh, Michael's just about dipped into the 12s, nine tenths off Tim McQuaid's fastest lap. Oh, sideways stuff from Keane there. Keane O'Brien, 555 in the Pro Tune car. Then it's Grimes, then it's Roy White, then McQuaid has caught them. Lap times will be interesting this time round. Fastest lap, McMullen, beaten by Victor Cullen now. Victor Cullen, fastest lap. No, the same lap time. I haven't seen that on this system. To three digital. Uh, 
to three digits, 11.937 to Darren McMullen and to Victor Cullen. So the track getting slightly quicker, but Victor Cullen on a bit of a roll and beginning to ease away now. 12-3 for Ross Barnes, but the leader, Darren McMullen, with a blinder into the 11s. So the track definitely drying now. But plenty of uh, entertainment from the Alloy, Alloy Repair Centre Fiesta STs. It's amazing the few extra cars on the grid gives us uh, far more entertainment. And we've got a few more due to come out. Mandela Park have purchased one of these cars and there's talk of them putting some of the junior mini drivers into it. In fact, the winning winner of the junior minis uh, may receive a drive from Mandela Park in one of these cars in, in 2025. There's a deal that's been worked on at the moment. Junior Minis were racing yesterday, the patch tyre equipment Junior Minis that gave us wonderful entertainment. I think they'll probably be promoted to the live stream soon because the grids are gone way up this year. Here's O'Brien, no problem for him. One minute 30 to go, so probably starting the penultimate lap now is McMullen. Good drive from him. Then Ross Barnes. Wonder will the lap time be beaten? This time it hasn't been so far. Yes, it has. Keen O'Brien, 11.907. As he begins to ease away from these two. Oh, down the outside. Look at uh, Tim McQuaid. Again, closing them down again. And O'Brien's gone wide, out of shot. We just uh, changed shot there. O'Brien's gone wide at turn two. Let's wait and see what happens. He was going to come under attack from Grimes and Roy White. Going back over the hill now. This is it, yeah, they've all closed up. O'Brien hung on to it, but the gap has been closed because Grimes is with him, White is with him, and now McQuaid is with him. And we're with another lap to go because there's 35 seconds to run a beautifully controlled drift by the Pro-Tune car of O'Brien down into the S's there. And he's beginning to ease away again, isn't he? When they came back into shot, he was right with him. He's very confident in these conditions. I think O'Brien has realized that it's trying. He's got fastest lap, remember, but he's a big mistake down in turn one uh, at the start of this lap, but he's certainly uh, got it all together. As Victor Cullen begins to haul in Ross Barnes now, now they're starting their final lap. One more lap, two kilometers to go for Darren McMullen. Ross Barnes in second, Victor Cullen in third. Then Keen O'Brien, Chris Grimes Jr., Roy White, Tim McQuaid, Michael Cullen in eighth. Then Trevor Farrar and John Elliff, who has charged all the way from the back. Roy White having a look around the outside now. Grimes says, I don't think so. Uses all the road on the way back. Out of turn one, and they all have to touch the brakes as they go through Campion Corner. The reason for that is you don't want to go through that corner in the wet on a trailing throttle. The car will just go around on you. So you're better off slow it slightly on the entrance and drive it through on the power to make sure that it's more stable. And Tim McQuaid, I don't know where Tim McQuaid gets his uh, speed or racecraft from because he started racing last year, but he hasn't done much at all. Really is going nicely though. Marcus Hayes, another man on a charge, driving his father's iconic number 88. He's up to 12th place. So he'll be delighted with that. First race in Fiesta STs. Running John Hayes' cars on the side of the car. A little bit of Peugeot Talbot Sport stickering, I think I saw on his sun visor this morning uh, when he was going out to qualify. But it's going to be Darren McMullen, the perfect start for the season for him in the Alloy Repair Centre Fiesta STs. He has not made any mistakes at all, and he comes down to a strong win in race one. Great stuff from him, a good gap from Ross Barnes in second place. Then it's Victor Cullen, a good drive from Victor Cullen to third place. Then Michael Cullen still has time to give uh, thumbs up to the team, but I think it was a thumb as he went by the LOH Motorsport uh, crew on the wall there. You can see them at the top of the screen. They will have a massive rethink before race two. That was John Elliff that we spoke about just crossing the line there, and he did get a top 10 finish. I did say watch out for him. He started 18th. And uh, he got a well up through them there. So good stuff from him. Fastest lap stands to Keen O'Brien, 11.907, the Dundalk man, carrying SWR on the side of his car, Sean Woods Racing. Remembering the late Sean Woods, of course. So there are the official, well, not the official results. That's our graphic, the Alloy Repair Centre Fiesta ST Championship Race 1. Dara McMullen takes the win. Second place, Ross Barnes. Third place, Victor Cullen. Fourth place and fastest lap for Keen O'Brien. Then Chris Grimes Jr., Roy White, Tim McQuaid, Michael Cullen, Trevor Farrar, and John Elliff. Great stuff from the Alloy Repair Centre Fiesta STs. Highly, highly entertaining. There's the rest of them. So uh, a lot of new names, as we said, a lot of new cars back out. We only had uh, 16 finishers, but we had uh, 20 entries originally, and we lost two early on, Gordon Kellett and uh, Gordon Kellett and Brenda Fitzgerald, I think. So they're just coming back into assembly now. But... Uh, Great entertainment from Fiesta SDs and don't forget they're back on again after lunch.
we'll be looking at the timetable to see what's out. So next up, we will have Precision Graphics Future Classics Championship, a great grid of those guys. Then the Precision Graphics Irish Touring Cars Championship, and then the Sayets Super Cup Ireland Championship, the factory built 340 brake horsepower Sayets, one make fastest one make saloon championship in the country. We'll break for lunch. We're back with the Siltec Safety Fiesta ZTEC Championship. That's the biggest uh, grid of the day as ever. Then the uh, Connolly's Top Line Formula Boss Ireland Championship. Then Legends Ireland are back for race number two. The Alloy Repair Fiesta STs for their race number two. And then it's Future Classics, ITCC, Say It Super Cup, Fiesta ZTEX, Boss Ireland again. And we'll finish out with the third race of the day for the Irish Legends. The sun has come out. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, looks really good out the back of the circuit now. Main Street, as you can see, still a little bit wet, but it's certainly going to dry pretty quickly as the Future Classics prepare to leave the assembly area. Just a short delay while we're waiting for the precision 
graphics uh, future classics to be released in the assembly area. Let's have a look at the grid anyway, as uh, Mandela Park gets brighter and more sunny by the minute. So pole position will be the Honda Civic of uh, Connor McElmeal. I hope I'm pronouncing that right because I got it wrong the last time he sent me an email. But uh, uh, Connor McElmeal is on pole position. Great to have him back. Very, very quick driver in that Honda Civic. Haven't seen him in a while. Gary Bradley, very well known to us from the Wexford Motor Club and, the, of course, the wonderful youth academy that they run down there in the Wexford Motor Club. He's alongside him on the front row of the grid. Then it's Aidan Byrne. Sure, we know Aidan from uh, many, many years at Mandela Park and the Byrne family. Ray Melia alongside him. Then James Marmion. Then Paul Flanagan. Luke Marmion and Patrick O'Malley. That's the super future classics class. They've got a barrier time of 107 that they can't uh, go ahead of. There you are. Look how bright it is there. That was uh, almost jet black at the start of that last race, so it is clearing up in this one. In the future classics class, Jack Conaghy on the pole position with his dad, Noel Conaghy, alongside him with the two minis. And Jack Conaghy's birthday today. He's 20 years old, so there's a birthday present for him, pole position in the Future Classics uh, Future Class. And then Alan Sweetman in the Mini next up. Aoife Brady in the uh, Atlas Auto Service Honda Civic on row two. She's only done, I think, one race meeting before, but she's, uh, she's back out this time, so watch out for her. She won her first race here at the Historic Festival uh, last time round. Then it is uh, Ben O'Malley and John Lennon. And then Conlon Quinlan, Aaron Lennon, Tristan Adam, and Christopher Lee. So there we are. Just coming up on screen now. It's Christopher Lee in a punto. We'll uh, bring up the rear. They still haven't been uh, released, and I'm not sure. I don't see any rescue vehicles on track looking out the windows here. But uh, there seems to be a little bit of discussion going on down there in assembly. I'm sure they'll be out shortly. Strong grid of these uh, future classics. Always, as ever, great variety of cars. You've got uh, Fiesta z you've got uh, Fiat Puntos, a lot of Minis, a lot of Hondas, and, uh, um, and Mazda RX-7, a classic Mazda RX-7, a beautiful bit of kit I saw in the paddock this morning. Cars have been released out of your view now. They should arrive at the top of the screen very shortly. Apologies for that delay. I'm not really sure what uh, is going on, but it's been resolved and the cars are coming towards us. So we'll be going racing again shortly. We've got two more races after this before the lunch break, so plenty of action still to come before you uh, get your sandwiches. Here comes the Honda Civic, Collar McElmeal. As we said, Gary Bradley in the Civic, so it's an all Honda front row. We do have a car that uh, went quicker than the barrier time and was put to the back, and that is Patrick O'Malley, the uh, red EP3 Civic. Uh, probably way too quick for that class, to be honest, which I think if you didn't break the barrier time in an EP3 Civic, there'd be something wrong. A uh, two-litre Civic. So he did a 106.389, went seven-tenths under the barrier time this morning, and that put him to the back, but only to the back of his class. So he's still on row three. So it should be very much one to watch. Just at the top of your screen there, the red Civic. Centre your screen now from this shot. So way to go. Great sound effects, all these different cars as they head out the pit lane. Luke Barmy and 777 in the uh, Celica. Michael Neal just throwing the car sideways, trying to get a bit of heat in the back tyres. Aiden Byrne, a beautiful 306 Peugeot. I think that car is for sale. Mind you, Aiden uh, changes his cars quite a lot. He's massively experienced. He's raced in almost every class here. He's raced in Ritmos, Unos, Puntos, 
Future Classics, obviously, Formula Shane, Formula V, Rallycross. Oh, somebody's off. The pole man is off. Right on camera shot as well. I was trying to warm those rear tires. Lucky to keep it out of the barrier there was Michael Mill. That was uh, just flinging the car around, trying to get heat in the back tires. Perfectly normal thing to do, but uh, just got away on him there. He's still doing it down into turn three. Maybe not as much as he was, but uh, he was looking to keep that one out of the barriers on the warm up lap. So here he comes up out of turn three. It's a, it's a good idea to try and get heat in the tyres because although it's not generally a good idea in the track day tyre because they don't last the whole race, they begin to go off. But in this class, because the barrier time is on a flying lap, of course, they push really, really hard on the on the opening lap from a standing start. So watch out for that. They'll be trying to get away from the opposition, but uh, no, in no danger of breaking any barrier times. So here they come down into the main arena now. Still throwing the back of that car around as the rear he wants to get the temperature into. Obviously has to set the car up very taily. Harry Bradley weaving around too. And I think that's a rally spec Civic. It's not a car I've seen here before, but he's certainly getting the back to move around. Aiden Byrne, not so much. And Ray Melia in the orange, very distinctive orange Toyota Celica, a newer generation Celica. James Marmion in a similar car. And Paul Flanagan. And Paul Flanagan's not there. Don't see, but that's a shame in the little 30172. In fact, I looked down into the paddock and it's on its trailer. Well, that is very unusual because Paul Flanagan doesn't tend to have any problems. That car's always superbly presented and prepared. Aiden Byrne doing a little bit of three point turning down there. He must have gone for the wrong grid slot. We had a little bit of confusion yesterday because the grids have all moved back one, the first and second. You can see there, just ahead of the pole sitter, you can see where two is still written on the grid and the old, it's almost gone, but it's been freshly painted and they've all been moved back just a little bit. So uh, that confuses some of the cars. So we're missing Paul Flanagan, which is a shame. He's always right up the front of the little Clio 172. We should be almost good to go. The future class not lining up as per the grid I have. It's, uh, it's in fact, there's nothing like the grid I have, is it? Heifer Brady's on row three instead of row two. Noel Conachy is on row two instead of row one. Anyway, we'll work it out once they get going, but that's certainly not the grid I've been given, so apologies for that. Away they go, and a lot of wheel spin from both of them, and Aiden Byrne gets the best start, the little Peugeot. What's out for O'Malley in the EP3 down the outside of the Mini's making a big squeeze along the barrier. The pincer movement there by the Conic, he's trying to get by one of the Salikas. It's McElmeal leading, it's Aiden Byrne up to second place down the inside. There's the danger man, the red Civic round the outside, Patrick O'Malley. All the rest come streaming through. Some of the minis rubbing uh, door handles there as they come out of turn one and head for Campion Corner. Turn two for the first time. Great grid of these uh, Precision Graphics Future Classics cars streaming down towards turn one. Aiden burn on a charge here, isn't he? Look at him closing down the leader. He looks like he's going to have a lunge down the inside, but McElmeal closes the door, but the back of that car is loose. And Aiden Byrne gets right into the apex, trying to get alongside now as they come back up towards us. But the EP3 is coming, cruising up through the pack, already up to third place, I think, in the background. Here's Aiden Byrne down the inside with a big look. McElmeal just closes the door. O'Malley is already up to third place behind them. I don't think they're going to be leading this one for too long. Byrne way quicker again through the second bit of the S's, but McElmeal putting the car where it needs to be. Oh, sideways stuff from O'Malley in the background, well held. Here comes Aiden Byrne with a good old-fashioned Formula Ford style lunge up the inside into uh, Southside, and he takes the lead. Aiden Byrne will be loving this one, but the Honda will be quicker in a straight line, surely. It's a lot quicker in a straight line. It just leaves Aiden Burns Peugeot sitting after he had the job done. So nothing Aiden Burns could do. And I think he's going to get attacked from a Honda from behind as well. O'Malley third, Bradley fourth. Then Luke Marmion up to fifth. James Marmion right behind him, his dad. Then Phil Lawless, Jack Conaghy. Phil Lawless leading the future class from Jack Conaghy. Then Ray Melia, Paul Flanagan showing up on screen. Okay, Paul Flanagan might be out in a different car. I didn't have that info. There is a black Civic that I don't recognise on the grid, so let's assume that Paul Flanagan has borrowed a car from somebody, because his name is certainly coming up on the uh, timing sheets, even those cars on the trailer below me in the paddock. So McElmeal leads. O'Malley already up to second place in the Honda. It's Honda's first and second now. The track a little bit greasy. They shouldn't have to worry about barrier times. They could, uh, they could probably press on as hard as they can here. Aiden Byrne down into the S's. Gary Bradley next up. 
Marmion coming through beyond behind him. The two Marmions actually. Nobody using all the track on the way out. Aiden Byrne right out to the outside though, but the first two certainly weren't. Leaders out onto the main straight. It's McElmeal just ahead of Patrick O'Malley. Great sounds from both of those Hondas as they go by. Big, big gap already back to Aiden Byrne. Fast slap to Patrick O'Malley, second place. Here we are, 10 1. Nowhere near the barrier, so he's safe enough. Getting a little bit out of shape at the second apex, they're still decidedly greasy. We can see that by the lap times, so they come back towards us again. So Mali just sitting on the wheel tracks of uh, Michael Meal at the moment. So they come down towards Bridgestone, down is the S's through the left hander. Stationary yellows there for some reason. And through Nordic Spirit Corner. Don't see any cars off, but there is a stationary yellow coming into the S's. Here it is on the right hand side of your screen. Burns still hanging on in third place, but Gary Bradley closing him down now in the Civic. Bradley right out onto the curbs and over them on the exit there as he tries to get a run at the little Bujo. Aiden Byrne much more uh, composed. Byrne not leaving any gap just in case down into turn one. Beautiful little 306, an unusual car that Bujo. It's Marmion closing them down as he drifts the Salika out of turn one there. Luke Marmion, that is. showing on the left of the screen but the battle we're watching is Aiden Byrne in third place uh, Gary Bradley right with him and in fact Luke Marmion closing down the boat now so three very different cars about to get interlocked in battle here Aiden Byrne under big pressure look at that from Marmion well held in the background big arm full of opposite lock if he lifted a fraction there he was going around but not a bit of it I kept the shoe in pulled it back straight Aiden Byrne just slowing the Civic down at the apex so he doesn't get a run at him and then getting hard on the power of the 306. Has he got enough power? The Civic's coming at him. Bradley's right in his wheel tracks. Not much in it in a straight line though. Good battles coming down towards us here. Some of the future class side by side, but still this battle rages. And in fact, Bradley's got by. Aiden Byrne trying to fight back now as they go through Campion Corner. This left hander flat out of these cars in the dry, in the wet, maybe not so much or greasy conditions. They may have to have a lift before the corner to ensure that they drive through it on uh, on full power. He's for Brady that we spoke about earlier, beginning to make moves now. She's done Belno Mali the last lap, just got by Alan Sweetman there, starting this lap, putting herself up to fourth in the future, third place in the future class. But here's the leaders overall. Puff of smoke there from Michael Mail as he comes through the S's. Doesn't seem to slow them though as they come back towards us. They've got down to 1087, so they are heading towards the times that might get them in bother. Big load of understeer there from Patrick O'Malley. Just went offline, didn't he? You can see from that shot that when the cars turn in from the shot, uh, looking at them from behind, that there's one line, the rest of it's very greasy. Aiden Burns still having a go, looking for that place back for third place, just behind these two. It's a good battle between those three. And behind that again, massive battle with some of the future cars. There's Bradley, but look, you couldn't see Aiden Burn. He was hiding behind him there as they came towards us. Burn right in his wheel tracks, looking for his base. He's very late in the brakes and a good late turn in. Try and get a late apex and get a better exit. That's what he does. But Bradley placing the car beautifully just to the left, through the left hander. So nowhere for him to go. Aiden Burn does get a run though. As they head out towards turn three. Burns still having a look as they come back towards us again. Down into Bridgestone, the left hander of the S's. Lifted inside rear wheel as Marmion locks up in the background, just desperately trying to get on terms with these two for a podium finish. Somewhere around half distance now in this one. Seven and a half minutes to go. 
Both of the cars getting a little bit of understeer now as it dries out. They're pushing harder, better exit for Aiden Byrne though, and he's right in the wheel tracks once again in the Civic as they cross the line. Then it's Marmy, and then a gap back to another cracking battle. This battles all the way down the field in this one. Oh, Aiden Byrne just stays out of the quarter panel of Bradley there. There was a gap, it looked like he was going to go down the inside. Bradley just turned in at the last minute. These two having a real go, both quite experienced, of course. Waves yellows down in turn three. Stationary yellow here on the main straight and wave down a turn three. Somebody's off on the outside down there. I think it's that Mazda RX-7 in the gravel. It's not affecting the battles, these uh, lead battles. This one for third place, of course. It's McElmeal still from O'Malley. Then this battle between Gary Bradley and Aidan Byrne. Seven two now for Conor McElmeal. This battle is still raging with the station for yellows now. So that's Phil Lawless in that black uh, Civic Coupe. I'm just checking as they go by here, just uh, double checking these guys. So McElmeal, O'Malley, and then these two, Bradley and Byrne. Five and a half minutes to run. A oh, big look by Aiden Byrne again up the inside. We've seen him do it before. Gets it done beautifully. Last of the late breakers. Lunge down the inside. Civic comes back up the inside. Though Bradley looking for the switchback. I think he's got it. They are door to door, these two. Cracking race. And they've stayed apart so far. Aiden Byrne is a great man for the lunge into what used to be Dunlop Corner years ago. Southside Motor Factors now. But Bradley just switched back to the inside. Cut a bit of grass and took it back from him again. And they're still door to door down at turn one. And that's allowed Marmion right up onto their tail again. Luke Marmion. Tifa Brady in the Atlas uh, in the Atlas car just leading that gaggle. She's still moving up. She's third now in uh, just on her fastest lap, and she's third in future. Leading future is Jack Conaghy in second place is Phil Lawless in the that, so that's a mini and a Celica ahead of her. Then it's Alan Sweetman, Conal Quinlan, John Lanane, Christopher Lee. Aaron Lanane, Ben O'Malley, and Tristan Adam. Tristan Adam in that beautiful RX-7. He's managed to get himself out of the gravel and uh, is still going. So that's uh, Alan Sweetman in the mini there. Beautifully turned out car. The black with uh, yellow trim. That's Eva Brady just ahead of him. She's got by him. She's beginning to ease away in the Atlas Auto Service car. Side by side behind them is Conal Quinlan, John Lanane in the mix two, the Fiat dealer in the Fiat Punto. That's the leader putting a lap on them. In fact, he's done a 6-9. The barrier time's been changed. I wasn't aware of that. It's come up from the timekeepers here. Somebody's gone off in a mini there at the second bit of the S's. 106.5 is now the barrier time. So just four tenths off it is McElmeal. Safety car is out. The safety car is out. You can see it there being dispatched at the top of your screen. This is going to close it all up because, uh, because of that mini at the exit of the S's. It's going to need to be moved. So they're all slowing right down. The leader was just coming down the main straight, so it's good timing. Wave the yellows on the main straight just to tell everybody. So still three minutes to go. We might get a lap. It depends how quick they get out there to move that car. That's Ben O'Malley, I think. 404.
So there's Michael Mill now. Having slowed right down behind the safety car until that mini gets moved. They're already over there, John Rock and the guys, but I am two minutes to go. We might get one lap, that'll be about it. They'll be able to drag that car in the pit lane, but I'm not sure if we'll get running again. That could be a result. It's a pity it'd be nice to see them get a lap or two with the uh, having closed up. There's that beautiful Mazda RX-7. First time we've seen that car here. And uh, just getting used to it is, uh, is Tristan Adam, but it's absolutely beautiful. There's Eva Brady going through again. So the safety car letting these cars by just to, to just have the leader behind. The way they work that is the safety car being in contact with the uh, COC, Ian Beatty, and race control just below me here. And they'll be telling him which car is the leader, which car he has to hook up with. So the other cars are released to effectively do another lap, but that's not going to happen, I don't think, with a minute and 28 to go. Looks like we might get a lap. Safety car lights are going to come out. They're telling me in race control the lights are going to come off on the safety car coming up out of turn three. So they've effectively been released. McElmeal knows what's happening. He's dropped the hammer. There he goes. And then nobody going to crowd him. He's seen exactly what's happening. And there's no way these future classic cars will be able to stay with that BMW. 460 brake horsepower. So he doesn't even think about it. Gets the head down straight away. Connor McElmeal using the head there and uh, coming with him, but a lap down. Where's his nearest challenger? There he is, O'Malley. He's got a few cars between him. Now, he can't pass those cars until the start finish line, but certainly McElmeal can uh, keep the pace up a little bit to get away from them, so that can be really frustrating, but it's just the way the cookie crumbles when you're behind a safety car. The lights are out in the safety car, and it's gone. It's already back in the pits. So great stuff from race control. We're going to get a one flying lap here. So O'Malley has got to get by these cars in front. He's already started progress there, perhaps. He has. He's behind the Mini now, coming out onto the main street. He should be able to blast by that, surely. It's exactly what he does, but uh, I think he's too far back to do anything at this stage. So, McElmeal, 2.3 seconds ahead of O'Malley now. On this, the final lap, he's already on his way out toward, towards turn three. In fact, is, uh, that's Aoife Brady with the uh, Atlas Auto Care. Aoife is a mechanic and she works for Atlas Auto Care. There's a lot of work on racing cars and detailing under bonnets and painting of rocker covers. She's very much a specialist in uh, show cars and stuff like that. And uh, obviously can steer pretty well too. She won her first race ever last year at the Historic Festival. And uh, as a result, has attracted a bit of backing from Atlas, who she works for. And uh, that's still on the side of her car. She looks like she is heading for a podium in Futures, third place. There's the leader, just uh, two cars behind her, and he's going to take the checkered flag. So there we go, that's the leader, McElmeal, down the inside. Nobody near him, up over the inside curb. He's driven superbly. He's just going to track down Aoife. He might get by her before the start finish line, he won't. So she gets to do another lap as he gets the checkered flag. So Connor McElmeal takes the win, great stuff from him. Patrick O'Malley in second place. 6-6 oh, six, six for O'Malley on the final lap, just a tenth off the uh, the barrier time. They've done that superbly, both of them. Didn't uh, break the barrier at all. It's Christopher Lee coming through in the uh, Punto. This, I think, is the battle for sixth place coming towards us. So it's a birthday present for Jack Conaghy. He turns uh, turns 20 today, and uh, he's just won the Future Classics last So him and his brother Kieran both turned 20 today. So fantastic stuff. Good day out for Conaghy Motorsport at uh, Mandela Park. She so comes down. So let's uh, there's our uh, our results. Connor McElmail in the 1.8 Civic takes the win from Patrick O'Malley in the two-liter EP3, and then a, a good drive from Aidan Byrne in third place in the 306. Uh, Gary Bradley next up. Then uh, Luke Marmy and James Marmy, and then with the yellow coding to tell us about the classes, Jack Conaghy takes the future class win from Phil Lawless and Aoife Brady. So great stuff from Precision Graphics, Future Classics Championship. As they filter back into the paddock, we'll be back on track in a few minutes' time with the ITCC, the Irish Touring Car Championship. So more tin tops.
So Precision Graphics ITCC, the Irish Touring Car Championship out on the grid now. Not out on the grid, I should say they're in the pit lane, they've been released from assembly and Kean Walsh is going to start from pole position. He dipped into the 59s, 59902 for pole position, that beautiful black Civic. A lot of work gone into that machine very, very quick. And he's not alone in the 59s, under the magic minute also is the uh, 2023 champion Rob Savage in the uh, Campbell Motorsport Integra, or Integra? Uh, Accord, of course, there it is below us, absolutely beautiful car. And then David Flynn in the Integra, Owen Drought in the Gulf, who had a tough time in qualifying, it couldn't get heat in the back tires and was off circuit on a number of occasions. That car is very quick in a straight line, but it always looks a little bit unwieldy through the twisty bits. Uh, let's see how he gets on in that one. He always makes good starts, though. Stuart Curran, Colin Morris, Stephen Martin, Stephen Martin, Ryan Stryker, Ian Stryker, and Michael Clune is the order in this one. Away we go, out on the track for the warm-up lap. Plenty of power from these cars, distinctive sound from the Hondas. Owen Drought's left-hand drive Golf GTI. Coming out, he's almost furiously beginning to weave around. He's uh, once bitten, twice shy. He doesn't want the back end of that car getting away at all. The Ross Gray uh, garage man weaving around furiously, trying to get heat in the rear tyres. Front wheel drive cars, but they tend to set them up, most of them, everything down to a ZTEC VS. A little bit loose at the back to kill the understeer and help your front tyres last delay the race distance. I don't mean last in terms of wear, I mean in terms of going off and uh, losing grip towards the end of the race. So that makes them a little bit difficult if conditions get. Uh, get wet or greasy or if you can't get heat in the rear tires his own uh, had the issue with this morning and uh, it was actually turn two campion corner he went off down the escape road at high speed and uh, was looking not to contact with the bank but he's still there he managed to get a lap time in after that 1024 but then did a drive shaft so he's not having a great day at the races today on drought that said he's on road two and he does make very very good uh, starts all the time in that golf so let's see how that one goes for him
So there's our grid and the lap times. 59.902 for Keen Walsh, 59.998 for Rob Savage late on in qualifying. Then David Flynn in the white Integra, 101.162. Owen Drought, 102.444, but didn't complete qualifying. Uh, he was told back in. Then Stuart Curran, 103.364. Colin Morris, 488, 4088. Stephen Martin, 104.594. Ryan Stryker, 105.736. And then it's Ian Stryker, 107.049, and Michael Clune, former Fiat racer from many moons ago, in a beautiful little CRX Honda at the back of the grid, 114.119, just shaking that car down, really. So, uh, Keen Walsh, you went really well last year. That car is absolutely immaculate. If you're here today, it's worth having a look at the front two cars. Very impressive bits of kit, beautifully turned out. And that was a great lap early on. We're midway through qualifying from Keen Walsh to get into the 59s. Apparently, he was in the 59s in testing yesterday. was the talk of the paddock. It's difficult to get a, a, a touring car under the minute, but it's been done before. In fact, uh, when the BMW M3s were winning this championship a few years ago, I think they were fairly regularly under the minute. But uh, some of these Hondas highly developed. Conditions weren't perfect this morning, so they could probably go quicker again. We'll keep an eye on that. So it's an all Honda front row. It's Keen Walsh and Rob Savage. David Flynn in third place. Owen Drought on the second row of the grid. We want to say hello to Neve Lawler, to his partner, who's having a bad run at the moment. We're wishing her back to full health. She's watching this, apparently, from uh, Mercy Hospital in Cork. So, uh, Neve, I hope you're going to enjoy this one. Let's see if he can do his usual standing start. I think it's beginning to rain. You know, have they got wipers on down there? They have. And they're not lined up anywhere near their grid slots either, so there'll be a little bit of uh, rearranging to do. Certainly, this, the first two have gone well beyond their grid slots, whereas the second ones are right on their marks. It's, okay, so it's only a little bit of rain here, but we're hearing from the camera crew in my ear that this is, it's hammering down rain at turn three, or it was briefly. They're going to let them go from those grid positions, and they do. And it's the pole man who gets away. Owen Drought doesn't make his usual dragster start. They're all clear away, though. Keen Walsh and Rob Savage side by side down to turn one. Walsh it is from Savage. Flynn next up. Then Drought. Then Stephen Martin trying to have a go on that beautiful cast for liveried Integra. Looking to go around the outside of the golf there. But uh, pole man getting away. In fact, I think that's Flynn up to second place, is it? We'll have to see when they sort themselves out. It's certainly Keen Walsh leading. Very wet here. Just watch for the back end of the cars breaking away. Could happen really easily here with no yellow flags being waved just yet down there. They've all managed to keep it together. I think Flynn's up to second. Where's Savage gone? We're only seeing the leader. There's Flynn in second place. There's Savage dropped back to third place in the Accord. Then it's Drought. Curran, Morris, Martin. Let's see if uh, if Savage can get back up there. It's obviously been a little bit of a messy first lap. There's been a little bit of shuffling around as they come back towards us. There's Rob Savage with the lights on. Drought wipers on in the golf. The tyre brigade Honda right on the back of the golf there. It looks a little bit uh, better through the turn, but the golf's got plenty of straight line speed. Well, Stuart Curran fastest through the speed trap by a lot, 165.2. Next up, Rob Savage, 162. Nobody else in the 160s at all. So fastest car by a long way through the speed trap is uh, Stuart Curran, who's behind uh, Owen Drought. It's car number seven. I don't think the leader's getting away too much. He hit fastest lap by a long way, but that gap's closed down, I think, now. Certainly, uh, David Flynn looking very good in the white Integra. The black bonnet, he was very impressive in a couple of runs last year. Not on uh, full slick racing tyres when he was in the uh, touring class. He still had to go with some of the bigger cars. He's looking uh, very good here, trying to get back up to this group behind. Gap back then to Drought, who's been pursued by one, two, three Integras, the Civic and ACRX. Oh, sideways stuff from Michael Clune. He's off in the background at the S's. Around he goes, just out of shot. There is going to be a change to the lead, is there? They're all closing up. It's very difficult. It's gone very windy out there again. See the camera moving around just a little bit. They head down towards turn one. So first, second and third now pretty close together. Flynn is uh, smelling a win here and looking to get around Kean Walsh and certainly looking very comfortable in these tricky conditions. Cleared again down to turn three. We did say we were going to get all the seasons with that wind. Look at Flynn, he's so confident, so quick through the first apex and closes right up to the back of the Civic in front of him. And they all get hard on the power back up the hill. Honda's first, second and third in this one. A big gap back then to Owen Drought. First three really close together. 
coming down to complete for three laps in this one. Still 11 minutes, 12 minutes to go, so it's going to be a long race. Up over the inside curb for uh, Keen Walsh. Savage looking to get a run. Look at Savage, supposed to be huge power in this car. He pulls out and gets alongside the Integra. Savage has got the car up to temperature now. He locks a wheel, though, locks it a couple of times as he has a look down the outside. But I think uh, Rob Savage was waiting until he had a bit of temperature in the tires before he began to push. Great exit from the last corner and so much power on the main straight. Just pulled out. He's going to do it again. He eases up alongside the Integra, but he's on the outside, out of shot on the way to turn three. No, he's got it done before the first apex. He's up to second place. And I think Keen Walsh will be looking in the mirrors going, oh, no, here comes Savo. Because Rob Savage up to second place and looking very, very strong at this stage of the race in the Campbell Motorsport Honda Accord. Oh, he gets it way out of shape. He must have heard me. Gets the touring car, hops on the way in. Lucky to stay out of the barrier. Oh, and lucky to stay out of the Integra. That could have been very messy. That's probably worth a look back at if we get a chance. Wow, just got the hops and uh, held on. So what I was just saying, he looked smooth and composed. He was anything but coming down into the S as the back end of the car got away. And then it started to hop around on him. It didn't look nice at all, but he did uh, pull it back straight and stand on the power. So it's obviously not uh, completely dry just yet. But that said, Keen Walsh has just done a minute point seven. It's less than a second off his pole time. So he's getting down there. It's the second and third still together, but Flynn back up to that, to that second place. Watch coming into the S's again and see if that happens. Hopefully it doesn't as uh, Rob Savage comes down towards us. They haven't lost too much time to the leader, have they? There's the three of them in one shot again. Locks a wheel again. Rob Savage, he's obviously pushing very hard. Spitting flames when he changed gear there. It was a great shot from the Accord halfway through the S's. Man on the move once again seems to be Flynn now. He's got away from uh, Savage. Drought beginning to get a little bit more settled. He's got away from the Hondas behind and he's uh, lap times have come down. So let's have a look. Walsh clearly quicker than anybody though. 1023 for Walsh. Flynn quicker that time round. He's right on the back bumper, the leader now. So let's see, nobody else doing any quick lap. Oh, 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 drought 62.1. He's quicker than the leader. He's not quicker than Flynn, but he's quicker than Keen Walsh that time round. So maybe with the tyres up to temperature, Drought might be a little bit more confident with the golf. He's a long way back, though. He's uh, seven seconds back from this group, so I don't think he's going to get up to them, but he's certainly matching them for times now. But the three Hondas way out their own, Walsh, Flynn and Savage. Flynn actually is in the touring class, according to my uh, readout here. Super touring is Walsh, Savage, Drought and Curran. That's uh, Michael Clune, first time out in that CRX. And the leader's bearing down on him now. Leader goes through 61.052, 61.4 for Flynn, 61.1 for Savage, who gets out of shape. There are wave yellows already down there. It's Michael Kloon off in the CRX. There we go. So it's his second time off in this one. He's been off down at, uh, at the S's already. The rain coming down again heavily, very heavily, and suddenly here at Mondello. We are getting some changes today. It is absolutely hammering down now. And it, that might suit Keen Walsh a little bit. He's just easing away straight away, whereas uh, Savage and Flynn still battling. But uh, Keen Walsh has opened that gap out. Come down into the S's. They're a little bit tender foot now as they just get it turned in. Yeah, he's well ahead now. He's obviously more confident in these wet conditions. Keen Walsh hasn't made any mistakes today so far. Staying away from the curbs. Comes out onto the main straight. Seven minutes still to go, just half time in this one. These three Hondas well cleared of anybody else. Time's way out, 107, 108 and 107 last time round. Seven seconds slower than they were the previous lap. That'll show you what difference the rain, the rain makes. 110 for Owen Drought. So conditions way, way back out there. He'd done a 102 last time around, eight seconds for him, and 11 for Stuart Curran, 11 for Stephen Martin, and 11 for Ian Stryker.
out. So yeah, time's way, way out. A lot of water on track now. It just happened so suddenly. It looks clear here, but I'm looking out through the windows of the commentary box and I uh, can barely see out towards where they are now. On the SS through Bridgestone corner on the left and Nordic Spirit corner on the right. This time Campbell, or sorry, Campbell, the Campbell Motorsport car of Rob Savage trying to get up the inside and he gets it. No, doesn't quite get it done. Flynn uh, goes in later on the brakes and sits around the outside. But we know how much power that Honda has in a straight line, the, the uh, Accord. So let's see if he can do anything. Flynn knows it as well and goes to the inside. Here comes Savage down the outside, but he surely won't be able to get it stopped if he's going to have a go down the outside here. They've both closed the leader down that time round. Oh, Flynn with a massive, massive sideways moment. He hangs onto it, but that allows the uh, Accord to just blast by him. They both have to get on the brakes for turn two, which you might think is unusual, but uh, you don't want to be going in there on a trailing throttle, and it is very, very wet out there. Very slow lap for drought that time, a 114.1. Hailstones coming down now on the balcony outside the commentary box. Oh, it's really bad conditions. This is uh, thunderstorm stuff out there. And these cars are on slick tyres. I think we might see a red flag here. It's actually hailstones coming down really heavily on the main straight. I think we've had a few rotations out there already. Very, very difficult conditions. And Savage is having a look here. I think he knows what's going to happen. So he's going to try and get something done. But it's just uh, if you were on... Uh, cut tyres you might be okay but certainly not on slicks I don't think in these conditions they're struggling mightily even our cameras are struggling a little bit so the three Honda still together coming towards us times out to 112 so 11 seconds slower than they had been doing There they go, another shower coming down. You can hear it now on the roof of the commentary box here. It really is very wintry. Trout coming through to complete another lap there in the Gulf. You can hear him lifting off almost straight away. The car looks uh, pretty much unstable. They all do a little bit, don't they? They're doing well to keep these cars on track. We haven't got a couple of half spins. Just when I say it, the leader goes sideways. Oh, he hangs onto it so well. These guys are really good at steering a front wheel drive car. That uh, didn't even seem to slow him much. I think uh, for a fraction of a second there, Rob Savage thought he was going to get the lead, but uh, he carried that speed beautifully. There's Drought, who's still going nicely, but he's having a lonely race. He can't, uh, can't stay with these three, but he's left everyone else well behind. He waves yellows there and safety car safety car has been dispatched i think that might be a safety measure as opposed to there being anything wrong or a car off out on track but safety car has been dispatched so it's walsh savage flynn and drought top forward and striker current ryan striker stephen martin and michael clune all still running well that'd be a little bit of a relief for the multiple certainly for the leader maybe not for uh, rob savage or david flynn who both would have been uh, reasonable enough to think that they might have uh, grabbed the lead in that one but it's walsh savage and flynn drought only coming out of south side corner now flag is out great's going to be stopped and a, probably a good decision with three minutes to go i just think conditions uh, ironically enough of course it's gone bright again out over turn three but uh yeah, i think there's just too much standing water there to be out on slicks you'd really have to stop that put them on wets and send them back out but with three minutes to go i think they will just i'm preempting a decision from ian Beatty, the clerk of the course but i suspect he will just uh call a result on this one we're well over two thirds different so dis distance so there's your, there's your top four coming down towards the S's. Keen Walsh, Rob Savage, David Flynn and Owen Drought. And with Flynn in touring, I think that will mean the top three in super touring are Walsh, Flynn and Drought. And the top three in touring will be Flynn, Ian Stryker and Ryan Stryker.
Okay, well, I don't have any official information, but I can see the starter talking to these guys here, pointing at the safety car, follow that car. Look, I think we're going to get a restart here. It'd be great if we could get a couple more laps, but I think it'd be very difficult for them. They're all on slicks. The rain has stopped, but uh, we just saw the volume of rain that came down. Well, there seems to be a lot of indecision down there. I didn't have any information. I'm told now that they're going to follow the safety car around to the checkered flag. I'm not sure what the benefit of that is. We could have just called it, maybe. But anyway, what do I know? They're going to head off now behind the BMW Ireland safety car and uh, just go around to the checkered flag. So that will be your finishing order. I'll preempt it. It'll be Walt Savage, Flynn Drought, Stryker Curran, Ryan Stryker, Stephen Martin, and Michael Clune. Unless someone gets a bit racy in this lap behind the safety car, in which case they'll find themselves up in front of the beak, up in front of uh, Ian Beatty and the Stewarts, no doubt. So they head away. Well, maybe I have wrong information because like, the drivers certainly would not be warming their tyres if they're going to go uh, go to the checkered flag. Maybe they think they're going to go racing. The clock has started and it's got 2 minutes 20 on it. So if they get round, let's watch the lights on the safety car. That's probably the best indicator here. If the lights go off on the safety car, we're going racing. So we're watching the safety car now coming through Campion Corner. Just goes out of shot briefly. But certainly, Keen Walsh is weaving around as if he's going to go racing, as is Savage. They all are, in fact. Well, I can see it's out of shot, but I can see it from commentary. The lights are still flashing on the safety car. Yeah, it looks like they're going to go by the checkered flag uh, behind the safety car. The safety car is stopping now and waiting for them still with the lights on. So the safety car is, uh, I'd be 90% sure it's not coming back in. I'm sorry for the speculation. I don't have any, uh, I, I, I don't have the full info there. TV crew are giving me a bit of info second hand from race control so that's what I'm getting at the moment so it looks like they're I don't know they're waving they're weaving around like they think they're going racing but they're not it's what I'm being told they're going by the checkered flag and back into the paddock so uh, this will end the race the t time is still ticking down one minute 14 to go safety car bringing them around a very low speed around the S's
So here you go, the lights are still on the safety car. If it was coming in, the lights would be off by now and it would peel off now into the pit lane on the left of your screen. It's not doing that. Checkered flag is prepared below me. I can see the starter. So I don't understand where, I suppose if one of them waves, the rest of them are going to think maybe we are going back racing and they're all going to do it just to get a bit of temperature in the tires. But no, checkered flag is prepared below me by Fergus Brennan. And that's how it's going to end. So there's your uh, order. That's the checkered flag. That's Keen Walsh, Rob Savage, David Flynn, Owen Drought, Ian Stryker, Stuart Stryker, Ryan Stryker, Stuart Curran, I should say. Apologies, Ryan Stryker, and Michael Clune. So we're missing Stephen Martin. He came in the back gate early on in that one. So tough conditions for the Precision Graphics Irish Touring Car Championship. So your overall podium would be Walsh, Savage and Flynn, as you can see there. But if you look on the left-hand side, the colour coding, the uh, super touring class would be Keen Walsh takes the win, Rob Savage in second, and Owen Drought in third. And the touring class, David Flynn takes the win there from Ian Stryker and Ryan Stryker. So great stuff from Irish touring guys. We'll see them back on track later on. Hopefully they get a dry run because they are very, very quick. We saw two of them under the minute this morning and it was just very difficult conditions for them there and not the ultimate uh, finish from our point of view, certainly from an entertainment point of view. But we have got one more race to run before lunchtime. That's the Sayat Super Cups and they're already down in assembly. So while they're getting ready to go, we will just take a quick break here on the live stream. The Beacon Hospital, of course, uh, responsible for us uh, live streaming here. It's great to have their support once again this year at Mandela Park. So thank you very much to them. The state-of-the-art uh, hospital in South County Dublin. Of course, they also sponsor the Yellow H motorsport cars of Michael Cullen and Victor Cullen. Very successful year for them last year. Not so much this morning. A little bit of work to do. Uh, Michael Cullen did win the two striker races yesterday. We struggled a bit in the Fiesta STs, and that's not like him. So I'm sure they're uh, furiously working in the Yellow H awning down there in the paddock at the moment try and get some more info on that during the lunch break which is coming up just after this one but this is the Sayat Super Cup Ireland class it's factory built touring cars left hand drive just two pedals paddle shift 340 brake horsepower very impressive bits of kit very quick the drivers love them that's Eddie Peterson in his beautifully turned out car a great ad for his company Peterson's cars like new he will start this one on pole position Eddie Peterson He's uh, multiple, is it five times he was an auto test champion? Possibly more. He's a massively successful uh, auto test champion. 58.024 this morning, just about ahead of Shane Murphy, the former multiple champion in this class and former world hot rod champion. Then Dave McGuire, massively experienced. Dave McGuire was a top carter many moons ago, came up to Fiorunos and Puntos and Punto Abarth, Fiesta ST champion three times. And uh, he's moved up to these days. Then Paul Parr wouldn't be as experienced as the guys around him, but uh, has gone very, very well, progressed really well in these cars towards the end of last year. And he's right in the mix there in row two. He'd be very happy with that one. Then Max Turley, straight up from Fiesta STs. Always great to watch, really quick. Again, another good motorsporting family. Max Turley on row three. Stephen Wright, Northern Ireland visitor, just jumped into this class. That was bang on the pace last year. Brian Berry and Barry English next up on row four. Paul O'Brien on uh, row five, Gary Corcoran, Adrian McNally, and Stephen Marr. The last three of those being run by uh, Dave O'Brien, 
who's a former, is he a champion? He's a multiple winner in, uh, in Irish Touring Cars before. Dave O'Brien, quick driver, running these cars from his, uh, as part of his Porsche specialist business in Dublin. DOB Sports Cars. That's the ex, uh, probably still the Sam Mansfield car, but certainly been driven now by Paul O'Brien. Not the POB racing Paul O'Brien, the other Paul O'Brien, who's another ex uh, ITCC racer in a Volkswagen Sirocco many moons ago. Well able to steer, but uh, has been thrown into this car, hasn't had that much running, so we'll uh, keep an eye on him as the season progresses. I'm assuming they're all on wet tyres. We'll know quick enough when they get going if there's anyone on slicks, because they'll certainly struggle initially in this one. You can see them kicking up spray, which will always tell us that there is standing water there. Plenty of warm-up laps anyway, ahead of this race. So wait, two warm-up laps they're getting before they line up with Eddie Peterson and Shane Murphy on the front row. That car, Paul Parr car, superb graphics and that looks really well. It's 142 Paul Parr. Here's Brian Berry, weaving around the yellow and blue car. Barry English alongside him. Barry is another former oval racer, very quick. Races with the elbows out. So say it's Super Cup on the grid, Eddie Peterson on pole position as we said and alongside him is Shane Murphy, a multiple, multiple champion in this class. Now they do have a, a changeable ECU in this class and how that works is they all the, all the cars arrive at the circuit with 340 brake horsepower but if you get pole position you get 300, second place 320, third place 310, same in the first race, let's say you'll start race two. So it pegs them back just a little bit and uh, that always makes it extremely interesting but it is very wet peterson has great car control dave mcguire with an absolute belter of a start and he's almost helping eddie peterson down towards turn one mcnally goes through shot there and who's this on the outside shane murphy so late on the brakes he outbreaks mcguire he gets side by side with the leader but mcguire tucks back to the inside it's peterson but who's going to be second it's there for the asking i think mcguire's gone around the outside he has that is good stuff from dave mcguire to get around shane murphy for turn two so they're heading out high speed, as you can see. Sequential boxes and paddle shifts. Well, DSG boxes with a paddle shift. So down into turn three. They all get them stopped. Shane Murphy in third place. Paul Parr, some really impressive stuff from him in fourth place. And the car looks mega. And right behind him is, I think, Barry English, is it? I'll keep an eye on that as they come back towards us. I think that's Barry English ahead of uh, young Turley. That's what it looks like. If they come out of the S's, you'd want to keep the shoe in there. These cars would be really taily if you lift off. But Eddie Peterson, great car control. He's done a bit of rally crossing as well uh, in, his, in his previous history, as well as loads of um, auto test wins. And he's driving away here. Maguire in second, but Murphy fancies that place, doesn't he? And here comes Turley. Side by side on the outside. Parr being uh, crowded now by Barry English and Max Turley. That's a good first lap by English. Turley passes them down the outside of Barry English and tries to go down the outside of Parr as well. I think he's done it. Can he hold this for turn two? The two uh, green coloured cars together. Paul Parr and Max Turley. Max Turley's on a massive charge here. 
I think he's done it, has he? Let's see who it is. They come back into the graphic, just covering them over as we go. Well, it's Turley. It is Turley. Max Turley on a massive charge. Fiesta ST Championship runner-up last year. He's a real... Uh, he drives the car on the door handles all the time. And I think these cars will suit him. So Max Turley on a big one here. Let's watch the lap times they go by. The last time was a standing start. He's, he's already caught Shane Murphy. Par's not slow either. Par, the back of car's car gets away. There is no lock on these cars. He manages to hold it back. Their proper touring are only a fraction of lock. So he did really well to get that one back. Peterson already up into the final corner, but a lunge up the inside. Turley takes second place away from Murphy. He's on fire here today. This is cracking stuff from Max Turley. Sixth place when they went by the start finish line last time round. He's in second place now and he's chasing down Eddie Peterson. This is fantastic stuff. The fastest lap, guess who? Correct, Max Turley, 104.632. That's four tenths quicker than the race leader and it includes two overtakes on that lap. So he's got loads of pace. Murphy trying to tuck in behind him now. Shane Murphy, hugely experienced family team, run that car. And in fact, Turley goes wide, puts a wheel off, and Murphy takes it back. All the good work is undone again. And meanwhile, Eddie Peterson would be grinning, looking in his rearview mirror at this one. He will love these two to slug it out while he gets the hammer down and gets away. Eddie always uses the head, and I suspect he will match uh, that fastest lap on this, this time round. Let's wait and see. They're coming back down towards us into the main arena again by the Beacon Hospital signage. Peterson, Murphy, Turley and Parr the order. There's Parr in fourth place. Waved yellows coming out of the S's and a green flag at the final corner. Turley yet again is right with Murphy. Let's see what Peterson can do. 4-6 the fastest lap last time round. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes quicker. 4-5, he does go quicker by a tenth. Fastest lap, Eddie Peterson. Shane Murphy takes it back. 4-3. A 5-1 for Turley. Oh, big off for Turley. That's a massive one down into turn one, but the gravel trap does its job, and the tires do their job and catches them, and beautifully caught by the cameras there. But uh, whatever happened there, that looked more like a brake failure than a mistake. That was a big, big shunt, but uh, that gravel trap's been raked and prepared all week just in case of that. The tires have been checked, the barriers put on them, all that sort of stuff. That's exactly why the gravel trap slowed the car right down and those tires absorbed the impact. He'll be absolutely fine, and I suspect the car mightn't be that badly damaged either. And uh, Murray Motorsport will be looking to put that car back together, no doubt, for race two. I'm sure we can go back. I'm sure we can go back and have a look at that one. Let's uh, let's see what we can do. But uh, massive shunt there for Turley down into turn one. So Peterson leads now from Shane Murphy. A little bit of the excitement from our point of view has been taken out of it because Max Turley was on a charge. Par, incredibly impressive. Yellows there. No surprise, stationary yellows. No safety car required. The car's way off down into the gravel, or into the gravel and out to the edge of the barrier. So should be absolutely fine. So Peterson, fastest lap to Shane Murphy still. And it's par, English, right, Berry. Adrian McNally's come up a couple of places, the rally man. And Dave McGuire, not sure where Dave McGuire lost uh, all the time. Peterson by two seconds is the order now. It's par and English. Shane Murphy with fastest lap last time around at 3.9 as opposed to a 4.3 for the leader. Gap down to 2.085 seconds, nine and a half minutes to go. So the guys are on the case here. I think we're going to be able to go back and have a look at this. Uh, just get ready for this. It's a high-speed incident for Max Turley coming down into turn one. Here he goes. That's it down the outside. Was there contact there? I'm not so sure. Oh, that front wheel definitely disconnected on the way. We're slowing it right down. Look at that. The front suspension breakage. That's what it was. So obviously just no braking, no steering at all there for Turley. Great capture from the cameras to get that one, but uh, a little bit scary, but the track well prepared for stuff like that and uh, caught the car beautifully, slowed it right down and then just absorbed the impact at the very end. So he'll be fine. I'm sure he won't be happy with it. He was uh, absolutely on a charge, but uh, great footage of that incident there. So the order now is Eddie Peterson. Safety car is out. Safety car is out. Eddie Peterson from Shane Murphy, Paul Parr, Barry English, Stephen Wright, Brian Berry, Paul O'Brien, Stephen Marr, Dave McGuire, and Adrian McNally is the order.
Berry going off a little bit on the outside, coming up towards the S's there. He's been battling with uh, Stephen Wright, former rally man. But they've uh, connected with the safety car here on the main straight. They're all very experienced, so they slowed right down. Waved yellows and an SC board. There's the car of Turley. So it doesn't look too bad. Easy for me to say from up here, but uh, certainly all the stuff did their work there. He's out of the car. His body language looks a little bit despondent. I'm sure, he uh, smelled a win there. <laughs> certainly was uh, going to try and close down uh, Eddie Peterson. He was up to second place like a flash. Remember, put a wheel off at turn two, and that cost him a place. So the BMW Ireland safety car, the M2 competition, now leading them round through Campion Corner and down towards turn three, with seven minutes still to run. So lights still flashing on the safety car. And uh, there's the teleporter down there. They've done this many, many times. They get that car lifted up without damage and get it back into the paddock. Morning Motorsport crew will be waiting for that one. They've got a large selection of spares and plenty of mechanics here. They'll go to work straight away. say it's not out again until 20 past four so if they if it's fixable i'm sure they'll get it done fast slap still standing to shane murphy before the safety car intervention but uh, i think that car will be gone in fact it's probably gone already it's just been brought out of the gravel trap there down at turn one So safety car slowing down now because they're in contact with race control. I think race control are aware that that car is almost cleared. There seems to be a little bit of damage to the barrier, but I think it's just the, uh, I think it's just the coating on the tires down there. The tires are still where they need to be. Just that uh, white plastic uh, bannering, for want of a better word, that was across them. I could see it out of the commentary box window and down towards turn one. In fact, the lights are off in the safety car. We're going back racing with five minutes to go in this one, and that's closed them all up, which is great from our point of view. Eddie Peterson, not so much, but from our point of view, we'll get, it'll be highly entertaining. Just hope they all keep bunched up. You always get uh, less experienced drivers, sometimes don't do that, but you need to be right on the bumper now. You can give away a couple of seconds here very easily. So they're all right with each other. You'd, everybody in, say, at Super Cup is experienced, so it's unlikely to happen here. Shane Murphy with the headlights on, looking to get a run. Out onto the main straight, Peterson's car is like new leads, but Shane Murphy in the turf gas car right with him and trying to get alongside 970 his old hot rod number on the side window of that car it's peterson murphy par english right berry o'brien mar mcguire and mcnally down into turn one and right goes in too late locks up the brakes and uh, allows berry down the inside to take that fifth place very determined looking shane murphy this time round he doesn't want to get uh, left sitting. He certainly didn't look as comfortable in the car, really, as uh, as Eddie in the early stage of the race. But he's looking good here. He's right on the back bumper of Peterson now. Par not too far away either. Our English. This is great stuff. First three, though, perhaps beginning to get a break. Headlights ablaze now for Shane Murphy as he tries to unsettle Eddie Peterson. And Par is not being dropped at all, is he? It's one, two, three together at the S's now through Nordic Spirit Corner right out to the edge of the track every inch of tarmac and murphy senses a gap up the inside which is firmly closed by eddie peterson goes back to the outside try and get a better run onto the main straight peterson's seen it all before places the car exactly where his pursuer wants to go First three still together, Paul Parr hanging on to these two in front, then English Berry and Stephen Wright. 
And Paul O'Brien now hanging on to this crew. He's done his fast lap, even though they started behind the, from the safety car runoff. He's done his quickest. So he's done a 105.013. Paul O'Brien is hanging on to that group of English Berry and Wright in front of him now. Here they come down towards the main arena. Yes, it's right out to the outside again. They're all pushing very hard. English, Berry, and Wright. Paul O'Brien's dropped back a little bit on this lap. He's dropped back a lot on this lap. In fact, he's been caught by Maguire, Marr, and McNally. Murphy looking to the outside again. Peterson not being ruffled at all. Par with a grandstand view of the boat as they go through with just two minutes and 40 to go. Oh, they're very, very close at the apex of turn one now. Peterson and Shane Murphy almost inseparable. Barry English in fourth and Barry beginning to hassle him now as they ease away from Stephen Wright. Yeah, it was obviously a problem with Paul O'Brien somewhere around there. He lost two seconds from his quickest lap. Dave McGuire is coming back up slowly through them. He's passed uh, McNally and Marr and he's pretty much with Paul O'Brien now. That's for seventh place. But up front it's still Peterson, Murphy and Parr. Two minutes and 12 to go. Down into the S's. worked hard for this one Eddie Peterson if he can hang on for the win I haven't seen any mistakes just yet he's very calm with his uh, defense here doesn't bother defending this time he's quite confident leaves the door open and then gets on the pair nice and early gets a good exit there and he's got a length that he didn't have last time around he's a little bit clear this time it's slightly more relaxing probably this is his penultimate lap one more after this one I would imagine new fastest lap Eddie no it's not sorry excuse me Eddie Peterson has fastest lap from the previous time round, uh, 103.3 that time round, 3.5 for Murphy, 3.3 for Parr, 4.2 for English, 4.2 for uh, Berry, 3.5 for Stephen Wright. It's a quick lap time for Stephen Wright that time round. It's matching the leaders. 1-2-3 still very close together, aren't they? Then it's English, Berry and Wright will soon be up with them. He was nearly a full second quicker than the two cars in front. They had eased away, but obviously he's uh, just settling into it, Stephen Wright. In fact, he's right back with them. So it's two groups of three cars now. It's Peterson, Murphy, Parr, and he got back to English, Berry, and Wright. You'll see them in the background here. There they come. One, two, and three. Parr thinking of a look down the inside of Shane Murphy's. That won't have been in Shane Murphy's game plan. Starting their final lap now. It's looking good for Eddie Peterson. Peterson's car is like new, Turvas gas, and then the Parr car in third place. Then English, Berry, and Stephen Wright. Oh, and a wheel off for Peterson is a mistake, and round the outside, brave stuff goes Shane Murphy and uh, gets the door shut at the first apex. That was good stuff from him. Might have to have a look at that one, but we won't look at it just yet because we're on the final lap and the lead has changed. I thought Peterson was home and hosed, but absolutely not. A wheel off, I think, on the exit of turn two. Just slowed him up for Shane Murphy to get alongside, and Murphy kept it pinned down the outside in the greasy conditions and went round the outside into turn three. And Peterson looked like he was going to have a go back, but uh, Murphy got the job done. Murphy goes very defensive here. Might slow him a little bit on the way out. Peterson tries to get a run at him as they come down to the checkered flag. A great race from, say, at Super Cup Ireland. Shane Murphy takes a win. Peterson second, and an incredibly good performance from Paul Parr there in third place. Barry English holds off Barry and the charging right in that group. And next up, another group of cars go through. It's POB, it's Paul O'Brien from uh, Dave McGuire, Stephen Marr, and Adrian McNally all crossing the line together. So good stuff all the way down the grid there. We're missing Max Turley and Gary Cork. We're missing Gary Cork, and he, he went out on the first lap somewhere. So there's your graphics. There's the break horsepower as well they had. So that's interesting. Shane Murphy with 320. Eddie Peterson only had 310. Paul Parr, 340. Everyone else, 340, 340, 340. So that'll shuffle again before the start of the next race. But great stuff from, say, at Super Cup Ireland. Some new cars and new drivers, and they all look absolutely fantastic. And they, ladies and gentlemen, will be back on track at... Uh, let me have a look. See when their second race is. Uh, say it's Super Cup race 22, 16.20, 20 past 4. 
So we're going to go back and have a look at that uh, move for the lead because we only really caught, well, I only really caught the uh, the end of it. The mistake had already happened. Let's have a look. It's coming out of Campion Corner, the corner named after John Campion. Oh, he went very wide. Look at that. He was in the air. We might watch that again. He was in the air when we came into shot there. Eddie Peterson went very, very wide. Watch this. Let's go right back. There. Okay, great shot coming through Campion, through the dip, out of view. He goes wide here. Look, it goes off on the outside. A little bit of Jukes of Hazard there. Gets a little bit of air. All we're missing is the, the Dixie air horn from Eddie Peterson there. And look at the commitment of Murphy down the outside. I mean, you would expect nothing less from Shane Murphy, but that's... Uh, he could have lifted off and tucked in behind him again for second place. No way. He kept it pinned around the outside, and that's exactly where the car will get out of shape on you. So that's a great move. Unfortunate and a very rare mistake from Eddie Peterson, but certainly uh, great stuff from Shane Murphy to take full advantage and steal the win on the final lap of the opening, say, at Super Cup Ireland race. Absolutely fantastic stuff. That's us uh, done for lunchtime. We'll be back with the Siltec Safety Fiesta ZTEC Championship. Don't miss that. It's the biggest grid of the day and it will always give us great entertainment. So we're back with that shortly. Just a quick lunch break and we'll be back live here at Mondello Park from the Infinite Energy ICCR thanks to the Beacon Hospital.